Thundercats was a kid's cartoon that promoted righteous acts, but if it was such a pure program, then how come the showrunners had to bring in a psychologist to review the scripts? The answer to this question and more awaits. In the 1980s, most animated kid shows served as half-hour advertisements for their respective toy lines. While Thundercats was no different, the franchise's origins are far more earnest. The beloved animated series was dreamed up by the late Ted Wolf in 1981. However, the creation of Thundercats was more of a family affair, as revealed by his daughter. Janice Wolf told the Honolulu Advertiser about the thought process that went into the creation of the series. We sat around the table creating the characters. It was a morality play with superheroes. Basically, the characters have survived pretty much as they were intended. After the family workshopped the idea together, Wolf took some sketches of the characters and the overall story concept to Telepictures Corporation. The thumbs up came from the executives and the Thundercats roared into action four years later, hitting TV screens in 1985. Thundercats was all about good values and doing the right thing. lion and his friends were paragons of virtue. The show inspired young children to fight against the kinds of behavior that would furrow the brows of their parents and teachers. That's why it was so shocking when some explicit outtakes in which the voice actors let loose made their way onto the internet. And anyway, it was just plain stupid to assume it might be bad just to <laughs> what am I talking about? At first, many fans of the original show presumed these outtakes were false, recorded by people who were good at impersonating the characters. However, lion voice actor Larry Kenny later confirmed they were genuine in an interview with Thundercats.org. Yes, the outtakes on the web are real, and all of us cast members feel badly that they are available for young people to hear. Kenny added that he was heartbroken to receive an email from a young fan asking if lion really said such horrible things. The veteran voice actor blamed one of the show's sound engineers for leaking the R-rated content. We had no idea those things would ever be heard outside the recording studio. Oh, lion -o. We're not... <coughs> What's the matter, Snarf? You got a cold. lion is a name as instantly recognizable as He-Man, She-Ra, or Optimus Prime. Even those who have never watched an episode of Thundercats know that the guy with the orange mane and the cool sword is the group's fearless leader. What few people know is this iconic character had a different name in the series pitch. Miss Prissy Pants, stop fussing with your bow! This bow sucks. Uh, no, his original name wasn't Miss Prissy Pants. He was originally called Lion L. It's easy to understand why they changed it. The Lionel Richie jokes would have been all too easy to make. The Thundercats lead wasn't the only character with a different name in the pitch. Chitara was known as Cheetah, Jaga was known as Jagu R, Panthro was Panth R, and Tigra was Tigar. The naming convention for the supporting characters was fairly obvious to spot, but we have to wonder why Lion O wasn't called Lio N, using that same formula. Regardless, the final names selected were probably for the best, and most fans simply can't imagine these classic characters under any other guise. Thundercats immediately evokes memories of the heroic Lion O, the skilled Chitara, the super smart Tigra, or even the sinister villain Mumra. One character that most fans would rather forget is the annoying Schnarf, who didn't do much other than make weird noises and get in the way. The creators of the 2011 Thundercats reboot almost got rid of the shrill-voiced furball. As showrunner Michael Jelinek revealed, Snarf came very close to getting the axe, and then he was reimagined as sort of a tough battle cat, like a Doberman Pinscher version of Snarf, but a cat. Why was Snarf even introduced in the first place? Peter Lawrence, one of the writers of the original Thundercats, answered this question for ThundercatsFans.org. Snarf was invented by executive producer Jules Bass. Bass invented Snarf because he wanted light relief and, as he said, everyone loves some kind of wacko animal. Despite the general animosity towards Snarf, we cannot deny that he has established himself as part of the Thundercats legacy, for better or for worse. I liked it. There have been several Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies over the years, but we've yet to see a big screen live action adaptation of Thundercats. That's set to change in the near future, as Godzilla vs. Kong director Adam Wingard has signed on to helm a feature film based on the famous 80s cartoon. The good news for fans is that Wingard is a major fan of the franchise. He even wrote a Thundercats screenplay when he was a teenager. Wingard told Deadline, my real obsession with Thundercats came in high school, the pinnacle of me deciding I wanted to be a filmmaker and pushing in that direction. I didn't pay attention in school, made terrible grades. And the reason? I was writing my Thundercats screenplay through my entire 10th grade year. Wingard revealed that he wrote his 272-page script by hand and still has all the notebooks. 
When he learned that a Thundercats script was doing the rounds in Hollywood, he asked the attached producers if he could rework it. He went on to say this about his enthusiasm for the project. This is a huge passion thing for me. Nobody on this planet knows or has thought as much about Thundercats as I have. Thundercats arrived on television a few years after George Lucas' original Star Wars trilogy came to a close. The galaxy far, far away didn't only inspire the next generation of sci-fi and fantasy properties, but it also carried a powerful message of how redemption is possible for even the biggest villains. Darth Vader had become corrupted by his anger, turning to the dark side of the Force. But when it mattered most, he rediscovered his humanity and did what was right. The good versus evil element of Star Wars permeated throughout every Thundercats episode. However, the animated show also paid tribute to Lucas's space opera in another way. Chatting with ThundercatsFans.org, writer and character designer Dennis Woodyard revealed that he included an homage to Star Wars in the episode Shadowmaster, mimicking a famous scene from the films. One of my favorite parts was the ending where Lionel's father appears next to Jaga. That was my nod to Star Wars. Like the ending of Return of the Jedi, where the Force ghosts of Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Yoda appear to Luke Skywalker, this scene was important to Lionel. It showcased his mentors effectively passing on the leadership of the Thundercats to him. At first glance, Thundercats is your typical sword and sorcery show. Below the surface, however, there's a story that digs a little deeper than a simple plot about villains wanting a magical item from the heroes. Yes, the primary goal was to create a demand for Thundercats action figures and make lots of money, but every episode of the show also imparted wisdom and moral values to the children watching. In an interview with fansite Thundercats.org, Larry Kenny argued that Thundercats has stood the test of time due to its inherent positive message. This moral underpinning helped set it apart from many other shows of the era. Kenny said, Thundercats was conceived at a time when the TV industry was being criticized for bombarding children with violence and negativity. We attempted to entertain kids, and at the same time show that problems can be solved without violence, by people working together. Nowadays, it isn't unusual for television shows to have eye-watering budgets. For example, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is expected to set Amazon back over a billion dollars, according to The Hollywood Reporter. The 1980s was a time of overspending, but these kinds of numbers were still unheard of, especially when it came to animated kids shows. So how did a series about cat-like aliens manage to secure a multi-million dollar commitment? According to a clipping from the St. Joseph News Press dated September 21st, 1985, Thundercats cost $15 million to produce. Then president of the Telepictures Corporation, Michael Guerin, and Arthur H. Loomis, VP of Finance and Administration, confirmed this number was accurate. The reason for this large investment was simple. Telepictures secured a guarantee from TV stations to air the animated show for three years. And in return, the stations would get a cut of the toy sales. It was a classic case of spending money to make money. Not every kid show idea that's slapped against a whiteboard ends up getting made, as there are numerous boxes to tick and hoops to jump through when it comes to children's programming. The 1980s was an era renowned for parent groups lobbying and protesting over kids' shows, and the people behind Thundercats were all too keenly aware of this. The show instilled a few basic but important checkpoints in the production process. These were to ensure that the series would never end up in the limelight for the wrong reasons like many of its contemporaries. As revealed by former writer Lee Schneider in a HuffPost column, a psychologist was employed to read every script and determine if the story was appropriate for children or not. Of course, what is considered appropriate for kids differs from person to person. Schneider jokingly remarked about this measure in his column about the show. If you check the statistics during the period the cartoon aired, you'll see that murder rates went down, school attendance went up, and SAT scores went through the roof. When kids weren't scoring really high on their SATs, or busy not committing crimes, they were peeing their beds, scared to death with nightmares of Mumra, the bad guy of Thundercats. Remember that time the internet believed Michael Bay's Six Underground was secretly a live-action Thundercats film and the story had to be debunked by Ryan Reynolds? The Deadpool star has been linked to the role of lion -O in Adam Wingard's upcoming feature film, and he's not the first X-Men actor to insert himself into the conversation. Speaking to Total Film, James McAvoy revealed that he grew up loving Thundercats and that he wanted to see a film based on the franchise. The Scottish star said, lion -O is a great character for any actor. It's kind of explored a little bit in the cartoon, but you could really go for a 12-year-old in the body of a man. Like a ripped, muscly, fighting man who is meant to be the king of these people, but he's got a 12-year-old's intellect. McAvoy went on to joke that the role could lead to an Academy Award if played correctly. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.